Let's try this for the 101th time. We're going to go from this is the battery, where the battery, this is the battery where the power is stored. This is the voltmeter reading the power that's currently being uh, put into the battery off the solar panel. The way this wire, see that wire that just like tucked underneath? <clears throat> that wire actually uh, connects to uh, the battery. The battery and then the green wires are the solar panels. So anyways, to cut a long story short. Yeah, yeah. Cut a long story short, 20 minutes later, I'm still telling you the same shit. <laughs> so, there's our 9.68 consistent volts coming from the solar panel. The solar panel. The big bad boy. So, we're going to take the 9.6 volts and we're going to take the solar panel and we're going to close it up. Bam! That bad boy dropped sufficiently. So now I know for a fact. The solar panel's getting light. So now we're going to go to the next step. We're going to take that wire and we're going to plug it in somewhere else to turn these lights on. These little, this little LED strip. Zippity doo da day. The wire gets plugged in right there. So the little bit of light that's coming off of these LEDs is from just the solar panel. So the solar panel's got enough power to put in there. And I forgot exactly what our voltage was before, but right now the battery has a consistent output. Or I should say it has a stored power voltage of 9.68 volts. Now we're going to take... We're going to plug it back in to where 9.68 volts is the uh, current stored power. The solar panel is getting hooked back up. Eventually I'll have this to where it's all switches and stuff and be super sweet. So we're getting it back. The boom, boom, bang, 9.6 volts. Take the solar panel and kind of like tilt it back, cover it up, and make sure that the solar panel is actually putting the power in. And then we can even just disconnect this real quick. Let me do one more diagnostic real quick. Make sure this bad boy is actually uh, hooked up appropriately. Yeah. Tilt the solar panel away from the light and get more voltage. That means uh, there's probably a short somewhere in the system. But not a big one. So the little green junction box goes like this. Those two middle wires connect to that red LED light that you just seen. The two green wires that pop out. That actually connects to this little uh, plug-in outlet, which uh, goes up to the cigarette lighter to the solar panel. Easy, quick, easy, uh, quick disconnect and connect. So I could take the solar panel, pop it into another cigarette lighter outlet, and run the power, you know, from the solar panel into uh, whatever I want to do. And then. Uh, <clears throat> The wires on the outside, closest to my thumb and closest to my finger, those go to the battery. So the green wires push power into this little green box, and then the uh, it goes up into these wires here, which hypothetically and theoretically I could have just twisted these three wires there together and those three wires there together. But if I did that, I wouldn't be able to disconnect the solar panel from the battery, or the light from the solar panel, or the light from the battery, or you know, you know, whatever way I have it hooked up. Just real quickly, pop that wire underneath that wire there, zip it you that day. Pulls power in off of that green wire and pushes it into this black wire into the battery. And then when I disconnect that. I take this here and plug it into the other one, into the other connection. 
And then you do it, you always want to make sure you never, ever touch the positive and negative. Because if you do, big consequences will occur. Now I'm even getting more power. 9.7 volts. Which is even awesome. Tilt the solar panel back for personal assurance that power is going from the solar panel to the battery. And the reason the battery doesn't store the power is because it's old and uh, worn out. And... Uh, one of the six cells is bad. I've already done diagnostics on it, so connect this little wire here. I better look at what I'm doing. And plug it in. And then bam. That's the power from the battery into the light. Ding. Good cool beans. So now I know everything's working. Everything's back online. And for some reason, all the other attempts that I tried to make this video, it's legit because I got a 10 minute time frame, 15 minute time frame on my account. Like I said in the beginning, sorry for the trash. So once again, real quickly, solar panel this is the green wires. And the green wires put power up to here in the front, which then loops over into the black wire, which pushes down into the battery. And then at night, I disconnect that wire from out from underneath that little section there and then uh, I plug in that loose wire into the other hole right next to that green wire so then that way it pulls power from the battery and pushes it into the middle wires which go to the light so once again the green wires and the are the solar panel these middle wires right here, these middle two wires is to the light. And then the outside wires are to the battery. And uh, last but not least, you always want to make sure your positive and negative do not touch. And then uh, yada, 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 this is just a minor solar panel hookup. This ain't even nothing yet. I'm about to buy some nice panels. But uh, once again, too, the... Uh, the five solar panel configuration is set in a series. So I might be only having, you know, 9.7 volts because the battery's dead and it's kind of cloudy out. But on a nice day, that solar panel will push out 13, 13 and a half volts, which then will charge the battery. And you don't even need a big battery like this car battery. You could just use a regular 9 volt battery. And then the solar panel, as long as it doesn't output two, 12 volts for too long, you won't cook the 9-volt battery. The only way to efficiently use a solar panel is to have a battery or a place for the energy from the solar panel to absorb and store it to somewhere. It's the only way a solar panel is efficient. And the type of battery supply that you have that stores the energy from the solar panel has great significance also but you know I'm not no genius when it comes to solar panels I'm still in this little experimental stage as you can see from right here but once I get it on lockdown I'm gonna have switches and connectors so then instead of having to be like yeah yeah check this out while I pop this wire over here zippity doo dot day I just be like yeah yeah check this out real quick I'll flip this switch and show you what it does now flip this switch and show you what that switch does. Yada, yada, yada. So once again, the battery is charged from the solar panel. And then at night, the solar panel becomes disconnected. So then that way, the battery power doesn't get pushed back into the solar panel. And the only way to prevent the battery power from traveling back into the solar panel is to use a diode. And as of right now, I don't have any diodes installed in this system. So I'm actually losing quite a bit of energy when uh, it's not sunny. And last but not least, you know, I'd like to uh, say thanks for watching this video. 
you know and I got more solar panel stuff on the way this is only uh, you know a small portion of what I got popping off and uh, hope you like it you got any questions in regards to uh, the way this little wiring configuration is or you know how the uh, five solar panels how the five solar panels produce out 12 volts you know series together now if I was to take and parallel them and if I had had them parallel I'd only peak out at like 3 volts but I'd be getting about 2 amps which then the 2 amps would go into the battery yada 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 give me more time to draw more power but it is what it is I'm talking now just to hear myself talk yada 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 so I'm gonna uh, be like this voltmeter and shut everything down to zero negative zero Ooh wait how do you have a negative zero I thought it was neutral